Hello and welcome to the season finale of the Prehistoric Aquarium, where today we're basically just going to try and tie up all of the loose ends, do lots of nice aesthetic building, look at your comments, look at my terrible mistakes, and talk about the future of this series as well. But before we start, I just want to say that the reception to this series was not like anything I could have imagined. This is actually the first episode that I'm now recording since recording the previous seven or eight, however many there were. Um, everything else was recorded many weeks in advance, so now, this is me in the present, being like, oh my god, your enthusiasm has been so lovely. Like, genuinely, the comments that these videos have gotten and the conversations that it has started have been delightful. So thank you so much for being a very wholesome and very keen little community. I love you all very much. And as you requested, a downloadable version of this map can be found in the description. It should work if you have the mod installed. Let me know if you have any problems. I'll try my best to solve them, but it's all, it's all very new to me, so I apologize if it doesn't work. All right, first thing on my to-do list. This mod adds loads of new types of food to the game. Every single type of animal can be you know, cooked and eaten, and that's so cool. It gives so much opportunity for surviving in the different time zones, um, as well as just the joy of wondering, what does a placoderm taste like? Or an acanthodian? And there's that Precambrian T-bone. Again, like eating an Ediacaran animal is just insane to imagine. And I think as a few people suggested, I think we need a way to display and curate this as well. And the best way to do that is to make a little museum, aquarium, canteen type thing. This is basically what I've come up with. We've got a little kitchen over here with all the various foods on kind of display. And this little uh, sort of counter, I guess, where you can take things from. I didn't really put a lot of thought into sort of organizing them but um, it's just nice to have them included because it's a really cool addition. As you can see, I've also been putting some finishing touches on this back section as well. Um, there's loads more room to expand it when we need to. And also I've tried to sort of integrate the, the dome into the landscape. I'm quite pleased with that. And it just means that the whole staircase up to the dragonflies is better contained. Oh, and really, really quickly. So I just want to explain what this is down here. This is actually like the sort of studio, I guess, where I've been taking the screenshots for the thumbnails. You know, I'll spawn an animal, uh, photograph them like this from above, and then, you know, I can, I can sort of change the lighting around in here as well. So that's, that's how I do that. The main thing that I want to do today is I really, really want to change the sort of facade thing. I don't know what I was thinking originally, so I've got a plan. So I'm recording this in the future once it's done because this took way longer than I thought it was. It was like an hour and a half. I just put a film on in the background and it was really fun to do this. Um, it's very loosely based off of a building uh, in Birmingham. It's the art gallery, I think. And yeah, all in all, I'm really pleased with it. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I have this thing when I play this game where if I play it on my own, I put like zero effort in. If I'm playing it on a server where other people will potentially see what I've done, I put loads of effort in. Turns out, extrapolating that, if I do something that I know people are going to see on the internet, I, uh, I put way too much effort into it, more effort than I frankly should, so yeah, very pleased with this. I think it looks very, very grand and very, very majestic. It's very good. And as you can see, I spent some time fully integrating it, uh, what we've built into the surrounding landscape. So it's all like facsimile mountains that have sort of created this huge caldera-like thing. I'm, I'm quite pleased with how that looks. I just want to point out some of the wonderful ideas we had for the ravine. Uh, our own Dave Marshall suggested turning it into a huge gift shop, um, which is a wonderful idea. Um, it would sell Paleo Cast Gaming Network merchandise. Don't know how we'd make that. Um, I was thinking maybe it could sell like fish eggs and seeds, but that sounds like the perfect recipe for an ecological disaster. Um, what would be pretty cool if we could have like a huge like plush of one of the creatures like a massive one i'm terrible at pixel art but if anyone wants to have a go at that and send me like a screenshot of it on twitter that would be amazing i want if, if someone designs me a big wool plush to put in here that would be that would be awesome and the last thing on my little notes is um one of our long time viewers wanted an ammonite named charlie so that's for you mary we'll do this one because it's quite little and quite adorable and i think charlie suits it and while we're over here in the ammonite tank i think it's time we address my terrible mistakes <laughs> i uh i made a few mistakes i caught most of them and cut them out so you'll never see them but not all of them so let's quickly go through them the biggest one was in i think episode one i referred to this as a heteromorph ammonite I thought that ammonites only looked like this in the Jurassic, but nope, this is actually not an ammonite at all. It's an early nautiloid from the Ordovicians. So and nautiloids are 
just another group of shelled cephalopods. They're very similar to ammonites, but they are a separate group entirely. And that's honestly more interesting because that means that Jurassic ammonites converged on a similar appearance to this animal, um, you know, millions of years later, which to me is yeah, way more interesting. Someone pointed out that they really appreciated having the side-by-side -side comparison of the actual fossil with the in-game model. And I absolutely agree, I really enjoyed doing that, but I made a mistake. The image I used for Ichthyostega had been mislabeled online. This is actually an animal called Sclera, oh gosh, Sclerocephalus, Sclerocephalus. Now from my very brief <laughs> stint of research, it looks like there isn't that great a fossil record, like there, there isn't a full body fossil, I should say, of Ichthyostega. However, there is a really cool digital composite. So what the authors here have done is assembled a bunch of you know pieces from different specimens and that gives you a really good idea of what it looked like. You can basically see the short limbs and the broad snout and yeah, it's quite a cool model. And before I forget, I also cut out the trilobites. I'm so sorry. We will come back to them and do them properly, but it just, the recording for them just went so wrong. I dislike this tank a lot. And also, I had to keep restarting it because I'd thrown animals that weren't trilobites in their box and had to, like, suddenly figure out where they went. So, so for example, this is Yorgia, which superficially looks a bit like a trilobite, but is actually from quite a bit earlier, back in the Ediacaran, so it's going to go here with all of its friends. They're kind of cool. They have some neat trace fossils that suggest that you know, at a time when most animals barely moved, these creatures were pretty active, which is quite neat. And then there's also Lunataspis, which again looks a little bit like a trilobite, you know, at this resolution. But when you actually look at the real fossil, it's so obviously not a trilobite and is instead a very, very old, very early horseshoe crab. For now, I've just hidden them in here next to the Eurypterids. But um, yeah, again, we will come back to them and we'll probably sort them out at some point. There's something else that you didn't see because I cut it out was the little Paleodictopteran nymph. So this completely took me off guard. I was not sure what to say about it because, I mean, look at it. It's absolutely tiny. So a nymph is obviously the immature stage for our giant dragonflies. And yeah, I wasn't sure what to do with them. And I should stress, by the way, that this is really cool. We do have fossils of giant dragonflies in this sort of nymph stage, which is amazing. I did not know that was a thing at all. So yeah, really cool. Like I said at the start, the response that this series got was just insane. I still can't quite get over that there are a few people who are genuinely a bit upset that it's coming to an end. Like, it just became part of their routine. That's lovely. That's genuinely so nice. Um, combined with the fact that I really enjoyed making it, obviously we're going to do more. Oh my god, we, we're so going to keep doing this. I'm well aware that the Permian update is just around the corner, so by the time that's out, Hopefully we'll be able to jump back into it again. I know we also skipped an update as well, because like I said, this was all released many weeks after it was recorded. Um, I'm going to have a look at that sometime soon as well, probably over Christmas. And another thing I think you should know is that I'm now on the official Discord server for this mod, sort of usually just lurking around and occasionally making little suggestions and when they ask me for sort of advice and things. Um, but I'm mainly just sort of waiting until we start reaching the Mesozoic. I've already been talking with them recently about some Triassic fishes that I would like to see, but once we hit the Jurassic and the Cretaceous, oh my god, I'm going to be just non-stop bugging them with different different species that I want to see added, so you can look forward to that because I'm definitely looking forward to it. And if you need any proof that I intend to continue doing this, I've actually already started planning out where I would put new boxes if we need to start sorting out any new taxa, so if that's not a sign of things to come, I don't know what is. The only thing that I think could really slow us down, um, you may notice that the frame rate as this series has gone on has started to sort of slow down a bit. Um, it's very possible that at some point we might have to sort of call the population of the aquarium, maybe just have one example of each species. You know, it's we'll, we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget about the download link in the description if you want to have a play around with this, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.